Hey guys, welcome to the video. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how I created this soft look overpaint portrait. And as it's an experiment, I'll share the mistakes I made, the lessons I learned, and the software issues I encountered. Now, you may have figured out by now that PM.com, we like to do things a little bit different. So this is a change of pace from the usual tutorial format that you may be used to. If you're new here, welcome. We're not your typical Photoshop channel. We specialize in photo manipulation, digital art, and advanced Photoshop techniques. So if that sounds like your kind of thing, be sure to like and subscribe as we put out free new videos every single week. It's free, easy, and really supports the channel. Let's roll the video, enjoy. Okay, so here we go. Because I had literally no idea what I was doing um, for the first attempt at this, I got a basic, very basic portrait image from Adobe Stock and knocked out the background on that. And that's a straightforward process here. I just use the lasso tool and refine edge because I'm old and fear change. I didn't use select a mask. I held down shift, clicked on select a mask and that brought up the old refine edge options. But the compositing isn't the important part of this. Okay, so what I've done is purposely kept in all of the mistakes that I've made with this experimentation. So I thought I'd be clever and do a, a dodge and burn process at the beginning to pick out the highlights and the darks to make the image a lot more stylized at the beginning before I laid down the paint tones. But what I did was I got the the highlights of the cheekbones wrong. So what it actually ended up looking like was one of those really um, bad taste uh, airbrushed portraits that you get on t-shirts or fun fairs and you'll see in a minute how terrible it really looks. So. The reason why that happened is because I made a mistake with the dodge and burn process at the beginning and misjudged the shadow on the cheekbone as you can see there on the right of the screen. It, it doesn't look right. It's it's not good enough by any means. But I figured that out earlier for, okay, that's not workable. Ditched the dodge and burn technique and then just went straight in for the overpaint. Now the overpaint process that's being used here is the mixer brush tool that can be accessed via the brush tool at the left. So long click on that and it'll give you the mixer brush option. The next important thing to know if you're doing this at home is to select all layers. You make a new layer above the source image. When you have the mixer brush tool click the option box sample all layers and that will allow you to sample the pixels below onto that new layer without messing up or amending the original source image. So that's the main thing that you've got to know. Now in this experimentation process I literally just went on to the presets at the top there um, on the mixer brush tool and then just cycled through. So I tried dry, I tried wet, I tried different um, you'll see they've got heavy mix light mix and I ended up settling for moist heavy mix now because this was a soft look process I basically wanted to mimic the fancy book cover style that's quite popular um, I used a bog standard soft edge brush so no fancy brush for this I just wanted to see what the default soft edge brush could do to achieve that kind of um, stylized overpainted look. So here you can see some progress. I finally reached a stage where I was actually quite happy with how it was going. For the smaller, sharper details, I mixed things up a bit. I went to very wet, heavy mix on the drop down for the mixer brush at the top and then started um, tweaking and messing with the eyelashes. I knew this is a finicky small area, so the brush was made smaller. For this process that you're seeing on the screen, I was using um, the Cintiq 13 HD. Now, if you've watched any of my other videos, you'll know that I've literally just started using a graphics tablet. So all of this stuff that you see me here doing, I am 100% new to the game, a rank novice, trying to figure it out as I'm going along. But on that Cintiq, I programmed the hotkeys 
so I could change brush size um, on the pen itself I can pan or um, sample colors it's got a hotkey of alt okay um, this is important here I actually made a mistake so I was using a mixer brush and I was moving the mixer brush horizontally over those vertical lines and if you can see there on the lips what it did was it left these artifacts these pixel artifacts now if I were to go back and do this again I would do the strokes I would follow the lines of the lip creases and I'd go vertical instead of horizontal so that's another one of my mistakes that you can learn from you'll be able to work with uh, lips on figures much better by following the lines and the contours for the jumper um, change to a, a scratchy kind of speckled brush just one that I had built in there and moving around and following the lines of the jumper made a new layer above to do the overpaint the, the jumper wasn't the most important part of the project it was mainly the face I wanted to get the face looking good but as a completionist I went through and did the jumper as well so you can see already it's starting to come along this hair part now the overall piece I weren't massively impressed with how the hair came out but like I said it's all learning it's all practice so I tried out a few different things I tried um, a few different stipple brushes and then I tried one using a dedicated kind of hair strand brush but I weren't too happy with that so here you can see me trying to follow the hair strands and try and create a stylized overpaint effect now I've actually got a software problem at the moment because I upgraded to um, a, a brand new version the latest version of Photoshop for the channel I can't actually access my, the GPU for my iMac. Um, I think it's a 27 inch 2013 and it's not playing nicely. So I can't actually gain access to the oil paint filter. Now that's a blessing and a curse. Um, it's a curse because I would have used the oil paint filter on that hair, no problem. Um, and it's a blessing because I don't just lean on oil paint for doing stuff now my mission this year is to be hands-on and to be tactile and to make my work less look less photographic so you know as i said blessing in disguise once i've got the general overpaint done i thought i'd return back to that dodge and burn process so i'm using the clinton lofthouse method which is a curves adjustment layer and then you um bump the levels up on the curves change it to luminosity that'll be dodge do it again and do it for burn this isn't uh, a dodge and burn lesson but what i will do is include the in the description the link for clinton's video because he explains it a thousand times better so i've literally only just started getting into dodge and burn so i don't think i'm in a position to really teach it but i can show it in the workflow so I use the dodge adjustment layer to pick out the kind of highlights making sure this time not to make the cheekbone misshapen and comparatively comparing to the one that I did before this is looking a lot more natural and organic okay so getting bored of just the radial gradient background I pulled in a CG cyberpunk I use that background for, for some of the videos filter blur Gaussian blur put that in place and then it, it replicates that kind of depth of field look which is really nice and suited to this image because the original background that the model had was a blurred depth of field background now at this stage I created a stamped layer of all the layers so that is command alt shift and E control alt shift and E if you're on a Windows and just started tinkering with some basic camera raw settings so camera raw accessible via filter camera raw so a little bit of exposure contrast highlights shadows whites and then one thing I was messing about with was texture and a little bit of clarity as well I really like to use clarity to pull out details 
And what have we got going on here? Okay, smudge tool. Right, so I knew that uh, smudging was a method used by a lot of these uh, book cover artists for creating a stylized look. So what I did was created a new layer, selected the smudge tool, gave it a small strength, so only 11%. And then you on on that because the smudge tool has sample all layers active i could do that on a brand new layer and you see i got rid of the artifacts on the lips where it looks a bit weird and wacky and then anywhere where there was um kind of any grain or pixels that didn't look right so i've just uh, smudged over them to blend them in one thing that i discovered with the mixer brush tool is that it would sometimes pick up the the pixel information and retain the, the pores of the skin now in most instances it's good to retain the pores of the skin to make it look realistic but because this is a stylized overpaint piece i wanted to kind of eliminate them so that's a really good example there you can see me removing those elements okay so for the bonus tip to get the kind of scratchy line drawn. So even though the soft look is what we was going for, it was a little bit too soft and synthetic. So I'd never used, I had this um, plugin called Topaz Labs and never really used it before. So I thought I'd try out their impression um, plugin filter thing. So I opened up the Topaz Labs selected impression got the kind of textured line strokes that i wanted and then went ahead and imported that jpeg into photoshop there you see it 100 percent and then bring that down to 20 percent it only gives it the, the very subtle delicate touch but makes it look like that there's been work done to it but it's not overpowering because for this experiment it was all about the soft look as opposed to the kind of stylized scratchy overpainted look so that's a wrap for the first experiment on the channel did you guys get a kick out of this format if you did please leave us a comment below that will let me know that you're into this and i can do lots lots more if you enjoyed today's video please do like share and subscribe as it really does help the channel out i had a lot of fun today i hope you did too i look forward to seeing you at the next video catch you then